Dubai, a place that symbolizes the word luxury at its core. I mean, what can't you find here? The world's tallest and one of the most expensive buildings is Burj Khalifa. Like that achievement wasn't enough, Dubai took things to a whole nother level with Palm Jumeirah, stretching three miles into the Arabian Gulf and shaped like a date palm. Palm Jumeirah is an exotic island. So, what's so special about an island? Well, nothing, just the fact that it's an artificial island. Yes, it's a man-made island, and it's one of the most audacious engineering projects ever undertaken. How was it built? Well, let's have a look. First of all, answering the question, why was this island built? Well, why not? Dubai is a perfect place for the idea of having sunny days throughout the year. It has numerous beaches with hotels and resorts and a number of shopping malls. 5 million tourists visit Dubai each year, which is the Sheik wanted to triple to 15 million. But the size of Dubai wasn't enough for all those tourists. Solution? Well, build a whole island. To materialize that plan, the world's best engineers were needed. A search for experienced professionals led to Dutch, who increased Holland's land by 35%. They were booked and were to prove, first of all, that it was possible to build a megastructure island out at the sea. Work on the project began in 2001. To keep this fragile island safe from any kind of catastrophic sea incidents, the project started by constructing a breakwater with a height of up to 9 feet and 7 miles long. No steel or concrete was used to create the base of the island. Instead, the team used only sand and rock. Even though Dubai is surrounded by desert sand, they couldn't rely on the Emirates' bountiful resources. Desert sand liquefies once it's in the water, explained an engineer of the project. To keep that sand in place, bare loaded rubble was dropped onto it. Roughly 120 million cubic meters of sand had to be dredged and brought over from the bottom of the Persian Gulf, 10 nautical miles from the islands. More than 7 million tons of rocks were mined from the UAE's northern Hajar Mountains. This amount was enough to build two Egyptian pyramids. These rocks made up a crescent-shaped breakwater that protects the island from large waves and high winds. But the main challenge was to put the sand into a seabed. Dredgers would collect sand from the sea and dump it where the breakwater was to be constructed. All this was done when the sea was at its calmest. This was the beginning of the sea defense, without which the island couldn't exist. Now to the most interesting aspect of the whole project, the curves of the island. To ensure that the island is in the required place and shape, 420 miles up in space, a private satellite was used. The shape of the island is nearly curved everywhere and required pinpoint accuracy to shape it as a palm tree. Hence, GPS was used while pouring sand into the sea. Mobile receivers were used as grid references for the island and the satellite gave coordinates of the point where the sand was to be put. The dredgers would then fill the area of sea, which they were commanded to by the satellite. A six-lane sea tunnel connects the trunk of the crescent, 25 meters below sea level. To build the tunnel under dry conditions, two 1.2-kilometer-long dikes were constructed to form a dam. More than 5.5 million cubic meters of seawater was pumped out in just 45 days, with around 2,000 fish caught and relocated to prevent them from getting trapped inside the drained space. A 100-meter-wide opening was added on each side of the crescent to allow water to circulate and prevent it from becoming stagnant. A 6-meter-wide boardwalk stretched the length of the crescent and is the top spot for a sunset stroll. The $12 billion project began in 2001. Six years later, the island's first residents moved in. The finished island covers an area equivalent to 600 football pitches and is four times as big as London's Hyde Park. Today, the 17 fronds are home to around 1,500 beachfront mansions with a further 6,000 apartments on the trunk. Major hotels on the Crescent include Atlantis, The Palm, and the Waldorf Astoria, which brands such as Fairmont and Viceroy on the trunk. There's also a monorail that connects Palm Jumeirah to Dubai's coastline for transport purposes. It transports over 20,000 passengers per day. Dubai is surely a place of extravagance, and the Palm Jumeirah is surely one of the biggest examples of that. So, what do you think about this man-made island? Let us know in the comments. I'll see you at another time in another video. Stay in the loop.